Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about memory. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, when you are combing through a huge code base, how do you how do you get the code to stick in your memory? Well, if I if uh, if I am working on a specific feature and I interact with that specific area of the code in, in, in enough times, it sort of starts sticking. But there is no uh, there is no programmer who's working on a system of any significance who can remember all the code. This is incidentally one of the reasons why you have unit tests, because the reality is that uh, well, the, the the way that you can think about it is that if you have the brain capacity to keep the entire system in your head line by line, uh, it, with such clarity that you understood like the logic basically and the impacts of what you're doing within the code, like you have that full picture, then unit tests would be per basically pointless because you're well, I'm not going to say pointless, but I hope you see what I'm saying. Like Then you wouldn't need to uh, be worried that you're going to break something because you can keep the whole system in your head, right? But the problem is that they, even for small features, guys, the, la the average software project is too big for you to keep all of it in your head. You're talking about like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of files, even on a small project. Like the smallest projects are like, let's say, a a few thousand lines of code or something like that is usually still big enough for you to not be able to remember like every line or something like that but at the same time it's not really uh, it's not really necessary for you to memorize all the code but what is going to happen usually is as I said you get exposure to the same sort of patterns which is the key thing right this is the I've said so in a few other videos usually you have a few bigger concepts within the overall architecture of the system like the system is doing something specifically so let's say you have like an ordering system or something like that and then you know that this system is responsible for like some user interface where like administrators can go in and look at orders and list them and search for them or like look them up or update the status of those orders etc etc when you know that that is sort of the like the f main focus of the system, then you organically start. Uh, they, uh, then, they, then it, it sort of becomes a uh, a pattern or like a, an assisted memory pattern, if that makes sense. It's uh, y you know what entities are within the code, and you know that those are the main entities. And because you touch them more times, usually than like all the other, like there might be a hundred different uh, features. Uh, you're go organically going to start remembering the uh, the overall structure, like what entities are in the in the domain, as we call it, and which pieces of code are most com like in entwined with that core functionality, and that helps a lot with the uh, with remembering things. It's sort of uh, like these, uh, you know, it's it, it becomes a little bit like that flashcard effect, right? You make a you you make associations between the code and the uh, like the what the system is doing so you know that like, the, your brain commits these things usually easier to memory but then again then uh, it's also this is why I tell people make sure that you're documenting things that you don't do that often because you're definitely gonna have more than a few hundred slides of code like me well, more than that it depends on the size of the product of course where it's like it's code that you wrote for a specific case at some point and then the project goes in a different direction or like you have focus on some other thing for quite a few months or something like that and then you come back and you don't remember at all how this thing was structured or how it's working or anything like that because it's enough time has passed and this happens to me on my own projects guys like if I have a personal project that I code away at that thing for like I can love the thing and like really work on it intensely and then I lose interest I come back a few more a few months later I don't even remember in many cases where like all the things are or so forth and so forth and this is where those sort of architectures and those patterns that I've talked about becomes useful because if I know sort of like when you when you know how people structure their projects you sort of know where to go and look for things and like you can get assistance in debug in figuring out like what a specific piece of software is doing and so forth and so forth and unit tests as an example is a way for you to document how something is supposed to be working but 
you can basically forget that you're gonna keep like a big uh, piece of like a real and like that's uh, in my this is my theory this is why people really truly do hate the uh, like the legacy problem because it it messes with your comprehension of the system when things are very chaotic and there's like no clear architecture or structure it it frustrates us people because it becomes convoluted to figure out what's going on and that's why if you have a cleaner architecture you have like these sorts of uh, um, well if you segment things in the right way and you create a consistent pattern in your code it feels for most people structured and comprehensible and that helps with remembering how things are working or seeing the reasoning behind why things are working in a certain way so what I want you to take away from this is that you don't really have to concern yourself with remembering all the code it's simply not gonna happen it's actually the number one like it's one of the things that sort of well Let's just say, guys, that you're probably going to be in more than a few situations where your coworkers or like your stakeholders asks you about, oh, how long is it going to take to build that feature or this feature? And unfortunately, some of them are going to be like super annoyed when you say this, but it, it is what it is. And you go, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it because the reality is that you can get a question about any piece of the entire system at any time when you're doing like estimations for work or so forth. And it's basically impossible for you to keep all that code in your head and that's this is one of the reasons why estimations are so difficult because as soon as you start estimating you are trying to basically build the feature in your head before you've gotten your hands dirty and you it's very difficult to estimate how much work that is it becomes almost impossible when they're asking you about a part of the system that you don't really remember and uh, it's but it's unfeasible uh, and uh, to to remember all that software it's uh, it's we're talking about a quantity of data that is so gigantic that it's on par with saying let's memorize the phone book or something like that it's t it's not in your you will not have the mental capacity to do this and so the, this is one of the main reasons why w the software development practices that you know and love hopefully uh, that are Call, tend to be best practices they're like the architectures and so forth that you learn about they are created in order to create like logical segments and something like a predictable pattern that feels familiar to people it hel that helps a lot with retention using like domain driven design and modules and creating unit tests and so forth and so forth and then of course repeating work uh, is going to help you become quote unquote a domain expert in some cases where you've been doing or in, been involved with a specific piece of the system so much that you sort of know almost know it by heart and it's when you get to that sort of point where you start just like remembering pieces of it but guys even after me working for quite a few years uh, I fully know like there are some parts of the systems that I'm gonna sort of know exactly how it works and then there are gonna be other parts that only my coworkers know about because they were working on that they've been doing all the projects on that part and I haven't and it's not things to feel bad about guys it's I promise you you it, this is like like no software developer has this down so just follow those tips uh, try your best to uh, create a clean and like predictable architecture and structure your system in such a way that it's easy to na navigate and like find what you're looking for and so forth because if you do uh, that that's like the main argument against legacy and so forth the more chaotic and unstructured the system the harder it is for you to like recall and see the pattern of logic and how everything is working and everything sort of is like it's in a sense you can think about it as cold starting an engine because it's so complicated to come back into the flow of how this code is working because it's it's always different from every place it's hard to predict what's the, what the pattern is you have to relearn it over and over but if you have a predictable pattern it helps along your mental process usually have a great day